So I want to spend a few minutes talking about the choice of government policies in the presence of market failures. Now when I talk about market failures, that would be, for example, uh, externalities, either negative or positive externalities, or perhaps the market has allowed a monopoly to develop and so that there's a firm that is uh, taking advantage of its ability to restrain uh, trade in order to benefit itself and not uh, society. So broadly speaking, this is about, in, in the broadest terms, a government intervention to make society better in some, um, in some sense. And I want to talk about the, uh, the complications and difficulties of doing this in at least an economically efficient way. And so I want to talk about the steps uh, to go about choosing these policies, if, if one were to try to do it in, a, in an economically rational way. So, first, obviously, uh, you have to have an identification of the, of, of the underlying problem. Where is the difficulty? Where is the specific market failure? And... When I say specific failure, you know, I'm really, I want to under, underline the specific part. It can't be just, well, you know, the market's not doing well. Um, it's sort of what is the particular problem. Now, knowing what the particular problem is is going to be very important later on, so I want to uh, int introduce that. So you identify where the market failure might lie. And then we're going to think about trying to do something about it. And at its core, one of the critical parts is trying to think about the various types of policy options that would deal with this problem. Because there are all sorts of things that you can do when you've got a, a difficulty. Uh, I mean, let me give you a, a sort of an ex extreme example. Uh, economic activity causes pollution, causes degradation of the environment. Uh, having cars, driving cars uh, does so. You could say, well, we've got pollution, we're going to ban cars. Well, that seems a little extreme. Or you could say, regulate the kinds of cars that were in, uh, allowed to be sold, or to tax certain types of cars. There are all sorts of different options that you might take in order to deal with the specific market failure. And so identifying these policy options is very, very important. You need to measure the extent of the market failure. And when I say the extent of the failure, it's like you need to really quantify you know, how big is this problem. So you look at the, the various options, you're identifying the extent to which the, the policy or, or the market is not uh, operating uh, efficiently, and then you want to take a look at the costs versus the benefits of the various options. So in the case with the uh, cars causing pollution, okay, banning all cars seems like kind of a high cost. You get the benefits, but you need to uh, weigh the benefits that you get from the intervention, the particular government intervention, not just generally, but the particular government intervention, and compare that to the costs of, of doing this. And... Broadly speaking, the economically rational choice the economically optimal choice is going to be the policy, the intervention that directly addresses 
the failure. Okay, so for example, with let's say that it was again back to the car example that burning of leaded fuels was the source of pro health problems in children that might uh, breathe in air contaminated by the uh, the leaded fuel. So you could ban cars. Seems extreme. But if the problem, if the specific problem is the presence of lead in the gasoline, then what you might want to do to directly address the problem is to deal with the lead that's in the fuel. In fact, that's why we have unleaded gasoline. It, it was a response to a, a, uh, an environmental problem. But you don't want to ba ban gasoline. At least I don't. I think most economists would say you don't ban gasoline because of this narrow issue. Now, in other videos that I've got, when we, for example, look at in a trade context, the optimal choice in facing a foreign monopolist, okay, then we have we identify the problem that there's a foreign monopolist. We identify the policy options that was export, or I'm sorry, import subsidy, import tax, a price minimum. We, uh, at least in principle, thought about the extent of the problem, the cost versus benefits, and so forth. Also, when we talk about um, positive production externalities or negative consumption externalities, in each one of these cases, we're going through this. So I urge you to think about this framework when we're when you look at those videos. Now, one of the themes with all of this, well really two two important themes, two takeaways. One is that it's easier in principle to identify that there's a problem generally, but it can be quite difficult in practice to identify the particular extent of the market failure. Saying oh, there's a problem, is not the same thing as saying, well, I know how much of a problem this is. And knowing how much of a problem there is helps you identify the extent to which you need to conduct the intervention. So that is, brings up this overarching theme. You know, when you choose among the uh, different options about uncertainty, and the lack of full information in order to implement policies well. And this is inherent in any kind of intervention. There may be a problem, but knowing exactly how to inter intervene may, makes it difficult. And in particular, you could quite possibly have an intervention that generates more costs than benefits. It's not enough, at least from an economist standpoint, to simply, well, we've got a problem, let's do something. Well, that may get you the benefits of the intervention, but they're gonna be associated costs. So generally speaking, this framework can, can really be a helpful way to think about the appropriate intervention by governments in all sorts of contexts, not just international trade, but in domestic contexts and uh, dealing with, say, income inequality or um, infant mortality or um, additives in food that cause problems or domestic pollution. General concept, very useful to provide a, an anal analytical framework to analyze these, uh, these questions in an economically efficient way.